Today we're going to talk about using this little cheap thermometer and one ESP32 board to measure temperature and humidity. So let's get started. Now this is going to be a two-part series. The first part, we're going to deal strictly with our ESP32 board here. And we're going to get this all programmed up and ready to go so that then we can attach our thermometer to it. Because the thermometer takes a little bit more work. It requires flashing some firmware, getting some information so you can decrypt the packets and other stuff like that. So I want to split this up so it's easier for you to digest. Okay, so the first thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to go to, and I'll go to my development system here. We're going to just install the ESP32 add-on. So we go to the add-on store. Or it's the ESP home add-on. Click on that, and we're going to install it. Now that you've installed your ESP home add-on, there's no configuration here to do anything on. So we're going to start it up. And as always, we're going to check our log files and make sure everything looks good. And it starts up a web server so we can go into the web server and we can do some work in the actual device. Now this ESP home add-on makes the work of programming the ESP very, very easy. We're going to open the web UI and we're going to do some work in here to build a configuration that we're going to flash onto our ESP32 home device. So the first thing to do is click on this button down here and you get very specific steps to follow that help you do this. So the first thing we're going to do is begin adding a name, a node name. Now you need to not put any spaces in the node space in the node name. If you do that, it's going to break. So don't do any spaces. I'm going to call this guest BR node. That's going to be the name of this device right here. Now you may have multiple BLE below, uh, uh, Bluetooth low energy devices connected to this, but you are going to want to name the node itself something that you know about. So it's going to be up here in this area. That's what I'm going to do the name for. Next, we're going to pick a device. Now you can do with ESP Home a number of different ESP devices. In our case, we're going to do the generic ESP32 module. And then we're going to set our SSID and password. And alternately, you can set an over the air password if you want to do over the air updates. I'll leave that blank for now. And then the next step is going to be uh, submitting and it's going to create a configuration file that then we will upload to our ESP32. So now we've added our first node. Next up, we're going to program our ESP32. So for that, we're going to go ahead and plug that into a power supply. So I'll take this right here and I will plug in my ESP32 with a standard USB cable. And it's not actually going to go into a power supply. It's going to go into my Raspberry Pi where I'm running this right now. So let's go ahead and plug that in here to a USB port. And now you'll see that it's lit up. Now, once you have this plugged in, you're going to have to find your device. Now, if you plugged in your ESP32 after you booted up or started this add-on, you're going to need to go back to the add-on and you need to restart it so that it picks up your, your new USB device. Don't confuse this with another device you may have plugged in. For example, I have my uh, Z-Wave USB stick plugged in and it's not the device that I'm going to be flashing. So let's check the logs. Make sure it's all good. Looks good. And back to the web UI. And let's see if it picks up my new device. And here it does. It sees, it sees dev TTY USB 0, which is the UART bridge controller. Now what I want to do is I want to upload. And when I upload, it's going to compile the actual firmware. So it's going to go get things it needs to download and compile the firmware. And then once it's done compiling, it will initiate the upload process to that ESP32. So we'll give that a moment to do that and we'll come back when that's finished. 
All right, so you can see now that it's actually writing to the USB device. And you can see the progress going along right here. And we'll give that a few more minutes. While you're waiting, why don't you just take a moment and hit that subscribe button and the bell icon so that you are notified when I make new videos and when I go live. I try to live stream a couple of times uh, a month, every couple of weeks. And so you'll get notified if you hit that bell icon. And make sure when you do that, it's all notifications as well. We're about 75% uh, done with our upload. So we'll let that continue to run. I don't think anything shows up on the ESP to indicate it. There's no, there's no lighting or anything that's going on here that's telling me it's actually doing the upload. But now it's actually making connection to my Wi-Fi network as well. Or it's trying, and you can see it doing that there. Okay, so it's tried a few times now to connect to my Wi-Fi network. I'm not sure why this is happening. So what I'm going to do, and I'll leave these troubleshooting steps in in case you run into the same issue. I may have typed my password incorrectly, so I'm going to go back. I'm going to edit the configuration to make sure that my password is correct. And it is not. I'm going to save that close it out and I'm going to do the process again. Make sure I have selected the correct item up here for the device I'm going to write to. And then I'm going to upload again. It's going to recompile and it's going to try the process all over again. Shouldn't take as long to compile the second time as it, all of it's already there and the downloading is done. So it should be pretty quick to try this step again. My guess is it will work just fine now that I have the correct password for my Wi-Fi network. That's always helpful. So let's give that a moment and make sure that it connects here in just a moment. We'll watch the device here as well and see if it does anything uh, light wise to tell me it's doing anything. Now when it's uploading, it's not doing anything here as I pointed out before. And this here, by the way, is the, the USB stick that you don't want to mess with. Um, this is TTYACM0. You don't want to write to that. You want to make sure you're writing to the correct device. All right, now it's connecting to my Wi-Fi network and it has now connected to the Wi-Fi network. Again, I don't see any indication on here that it's doing anything. Now, if I stop and you're, when you stop this here, you're actually stopping the logs, not necessarily the process. So if I go back over to Home Assistant now and I look at my integrations, if you don't already have an ESP Home set up here, you're going to see this. Now I have one already set up that's doing my fridge temperature, but now it sees that I have my ESP home guest BR node. That's the one I, that's the name I gave it. Again, make sure you don't use any spaces or it's not going to work correctly. So I want to configure this and I'm going to click on it and it asks me if I want to add the ESP home guest bedroom node to home assistant. And I certainly do. And where do I want to put it? Let's just put it up here. I will call a new area. Finish that. And now what it does is it combines both your ESP home devices into the single integration. And so I have one device listed here for my ESP home. And that's how you get an ESP device into Home Assistant the easy way. Now our next step is going to be to take that configuration that we just did, modify it so that it can recognize this BLE device, this thermostat or thermometer. And we'll do that in the second video. So make sure you're subscribed and make sure you hit that bell icon so you know that I've got that video ready to go. And then we'll put it all together and be able to do some stuff with that. And I'll demonstrate how I did my refrigerator uh, sensor to alert me if the temperature goes high. So stay tuned and we'll see you on the next one.